Okay. So I guess you can all see my screen now. Yes. The presentation. Okay, great. So hey all, my name is Nikki, and today I'm going to present the following topic: introduction to machine learning with .NET. The agenda is the following. We are going to start with some uh, introduction to machine learning, then spend some time on ML.NET. Uh, after that, we are going to see how we can set up our development environment and create a project. Uh, after which we will continue with model building, training and consuming. Uh, we will have a short demo and after that we will have some time for question and answer. Let's start with machine learning and what is it? So uh, machine learning is a sub subfield of artificial intelligence that focuses on the development of algorithms and models that enable computers to learn and make prediction or decision without being explicitly programmed. Some of the applications are predictive analytics, image and speech recognition, natural language processing and fraud detection. So we can say that machine learning gives us the opportunity to program the unprogrammable. Uh, let's imagine that we need to implement a program that recognizes pictures of dogs. Instead of having a lot of condition ifs and so on, uh, which will check for all the dog characteristics, we can create a model, uh, use some data, which will be pictures of dogs. Then we can train the model, which will use this data. And then it will be possible to consume it and make predictions with pictures that it has never seen before. And it will be able to predict if these pictures are of a dog or not. There are three general types of machine learning. These are supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and re reinforcement learning. Let's look at each of these types in detail. So let's start with supervised learning. Uh, in this type, the machines are trained using labeled training data sets, which means that the, this data set has both input and output params. It's typically divided into two main categories, regression and classification. Regression is used when we want to predict a continuous numerical value as the output. In other words, the target variable in regression is a real valued number that can take on any value within a specific range. Example here will be predicting the price of house based on its features like area, number of bedrooms, location, and so on. The other type is classification. Classification algorithms are used when the output variable is categorical, which means there are uh, two or more categories for the output value. They can be yes, no, male, female, true, false, a uh, good example here is the spam filter. So, for example, spam, not, not spam, and so on. The second type is unsupervised learning. This is the technique in which models are not, not supervised using a training data set. Instead, the model itself finds hidden patterns and insights from the given data. Unsupervised learning is typically divided into two main categories, clustering and association. Clustering is a method of grouping the object into clusters. It is the process of organizing them into groups whose members are similar in some way. Therefore, a cluster is a collection of objects which are similar between them and are dissimilar to the object below belonging to the other clusters. Association learning, also known as association rule mining, is primarily concerned with finding association or relationships between items or variables in a data set. 
it works for some patterns in the data uh, to discover which items tend to occur together. For example, in retail setting, it can identify that customers who buy bread often purchase milks as well. Okay. The third type is reinforcement learning. Uh, this training method is based on rewarding desired behaviors and punishing undesired ones. So there are two types of this uh, learning technique, positive and negative. The positive reinforcement means rewarding desired behavior to encourage its repetition. It involves giving something positive such as a reward or price uh, when the agent performs well or achieve a desired outcome. The negative reinforcement Reinforcement means avoiding or removing something negative or unpleasant to encourage desired behavior. The goal is to teach the agent to avoid actions, actions that lead to negative outcomes. In this approach, an agent receives negative reinforcement when it takes action that leads to unfavorable outcomes or penalties. These are the three main uh, categories and types for machine learning. So we can now continue with ML.NET. ML.NET is an open source cross-platform machine learning framework developed by, developed by Microsoft. It's specifically designed for .NET developers, uh, provide a simplified API and tools to incorporate machine learning functionalities into their .NET applications. The key features are model building, training, evaluation, deployment, and of course also data transformation, some machine learning algorithms, and integration with .NET ecosystem. The main pros and cons of uh, ML.NET are the following. So for the pros, it's cross-platform uh, customization and extensibility. There are a lot of options for deployment. Uh, it has very good performance and it's um, open source and community driven. The main cons are that it's not so mature. So it has limited algorithm selection, limited deep learning support, and limited pre-trained models. So when we are building a model uh, with ML.NET, we need first to choose a scenario. The scenario describes the type of prediction that is intended to be achieved using the machine learning techniques. Uh, these are the main scenarios that we can choose from uh, in the model builder. The first one is data classification. Uh, it's used to classify data into categories. The categories can be two or more. Uh, example here is predict if comments are positive or negative sent sentiments. The next one is image classification. Uh, it's used to classify images of different categories. For example, predict whether an image is of a dog or a cat. The third one is object detection. It detects and identify objects in images. Example here is detects, detect cars in an image and draw bounding boxes around them. Uh, value prediction is used to predict some numbers like the price of the house based on properties like uh, uh, number of bedrooms and so on. A recommendation produce a list of suggested items for a particular user. Uh, for example, recommend products. And forecasting. It predicts values based on previously observed time series values. So we will have a large data set, and based on this data set, we will predict some future values. After 
we choose the scenario, we need to choose an environment also. It can be local CPU, local GPU, and Azure. Uh, the environment that we have the opportunity to choose is based on the scenarios that we have already chosen. So uh, we can see that for data classification, value prediction, recommendation, and forecasting, we can choose only local CPU. While for uh, when we choose image classification, we can choose CPU, GPU, or Azure. And for the object detection, we can choose only Azure. After that, we need to give the model some data. Uh, we can do that with some uh, TSV, CSV, or TXT files. We can also connect it to secure database. If we choose to use TXT file, count should be separated with tab or semicolon. A data set is a table of rows or training examples and columns of attributes. Each row has label, the attribute that we want to predict, it's the output, and features, attributes that are used as inputs to predict the label. So the label is the output and the features are the inputs. Uh, training, uh, after we have choose, chosen our data, we should train our model uh, to use this data. And once we do that, the model can make some prediction with input data that it has not seen before. Uh, model Builder uses AutoML to explore multiple models and find the best performing one. Uh, here I have one table. Um, which shows the average time to train based on the data set size. Uh, but sometimes uh, we should uh, try, for example, with more time and see if there is a difference, for example, uh, and if it predicts better. Uh, after we train the model, we should evaluate it. Uh, this is the process of measuring how good the model is. Uh, model Builder uses the trained model to make prediction with new test data and then measures how good the predictions are. Uh, it typically splits the training data into training set and the test set. The training set is around 80% and it's used to train the model. And the test data is 20%, which is held back uh, to evaluate the model. So let's continue with setting up the development environment. So uh, I would expect that most of you have Visual Studio installed. So in order to use uh, ML.NET, we need to add the .NET desktop development workload and also the optional ML.NET model builder component. After we do that, we should add the model, scenario, and data. So we select the project uh, and click Add Machine Learning Model. And after that, uh, we need to pick a scenario. After we pick the scenario, we need to select an environment, which, as I said, it's based on the scenario that we have already chosen. Then when we move to the data tab, we should select a file or SQL server, uh, which will contain the training data. And we need to select a column, which will be the label or the output uh, here. After that, we should train our model. So it's an automated process, but we need to enter the time that uh, we need this model to be trained for. Uh, so uh, after that, 
we can click train and we can see the best accuracy. This shows the accuracy of the best model that model builder found. Best model, this shows which algorithm performed the best during the exploration. Training time shows the total amount of time that was spent training models. And models export shows the total numbers of models export by model builder in the given amount of time. We can see this here. When we train uh, the model, we can evaluate it. Uh, so uh, by default, we will have uh, some fields uh, by, from our data and it will be pre-filled, uh, but we can change it and click predict to see the result. Mm, here, uh, the zero means uh, negative and one means positive. Uh, when we do all of this, we will have some generated code for us. Uh, so we'll have one embed config file, which will be the file of the model. Uh, and as a code behind to it, we'll have zip file, which is the train, trained ml.net model, uh, consumption CS file. This file contains the model input and output classes and a predict method that can be used for model consumption and training CS file which contains the training pipeline used to train the final model. How we can consume our model after we have chosen the data, scenario, train it. Uh, so we need to use the predict uh, method. Uh, we should first give it some input data, use the predict method, method and then we can see uh, what is the result of the prediction? And now let's have a short demo. Uh, we are going to create a program uh, that predicts if a sentiment is uh, positive, if a comment is positive or negative sentiment for a restaurant. I will open. Visual Studio. We'll create one console application. We need to give it a name. We are going to create. Uh, do you see Visual Studio? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So, after that, as I said, we need to add our model. Add machine learning model. Give it a name like sentiment model. Edit the project. And then we need to pick a scenario. So let's see all the scenarios that we have here. Uh, image classification is uh, not a good option for us because we will not use image the same is for object detection. We are not going to make uh, some predictions for a future value, so we don't need the forecasting tool. Uh, we do not need a list of suggested items, so this is not an option as well. And uh, value prediction uh, is not a good because we don't need to uh, predict a value. So let's check the data classification. It classified tabular data into more than two categories. And I believe this will be 
a good option for us. Uh, after we choose the scenario, we need to select environment. For this one, we can choose only local CPU. And then we need to add our data. So I have prepared one document with data. Let's see what it contains. Already edited. Okay, it's opening. So as you can see, we have uh, some comments, then tap and uh, one or zero. One is for the positive sentiments and zero is for the negative sentiments. Uh, we have around, I believe, 1,000 comments. Yes. They are 1,000. So let's select it. Then we can see that uh, it's processing the data. And here we can see that it has uh, divided it into two columns, zero and one. The zero is with the comment and one is uh, with the label, which will be the output. So we need to enter it here to say that it will be one and continue to the next step. So here we have 10 seconds. Uh, we can start the training and see what the accuracy will be. And then I would suggest to try with a bigger number to see if it will be better. Training, it failed actually. Let's see why. Okay. Let's start. Maybe again. you need to close the file in. No yeah, yeah, it's possible. Let's try. Um, it's it's okay. Yeah, I I'm not sure. Maybe it was because of the time. So we can see that the accuracy is not very high. Let now it finished and it's still not very high. It so um, if it's closer to one, it's high, and if it's closer to zero, it's not so high. So here it's close to the middle, so we can try with uh, more time to see if it will make some difference. Let's train again. And while waiting, we can cre uh, check the files that were created for us. So as I said, the three files will be added as code behind consumption, consumption CS, training CS, and the zip file. So we can see already that the accuracy is better with more time. And I believe it will get higher, yeah. Let's wait 30 more seconds. It's finalizing the model and it's done. So we have some better accuracy now and we can try to evaluate it. Uh, we can see here again the accuracy and the model that was chosen. Let's try with some comments. See what will the result be. Okay, so we have uh, zero 
so it's correct because the comment is negative. And let's try, for example, with perfect. See what the result will be. It's one, so we evaluated it with two different options, and it seems that the result was uh, correct both of the times, so we can consume our model now uh, in uh, the uh, end application. So we can delete this one and we need first to add an input data that we need to check if it's positive or negative. So let's delete it. In order to do that, we need to use the model that we have created, which is the event model. Uh, we need to add input, and here we can say that the column zero is good. Okay, so now we have the sample data. After that, we need to predict if this data is uh, positive or negative. So let's use the predict. Uh, method to do that. And we will give it as parameter the sample data. Um, so we need to check if this result, if this predict label, if it is uh, positive, if it's one, it's positive. Uh, and in the other case, when it's zero, it is negative. Okay, we have that, and now let's. Uh, use console runtime to see if it's good or no. Let's say something like the comment. We can use here sample data on zero is and then the result okay so let's run it and see what will be the output the comment good is positive let's try with something else like bad It's negative and one more, let's say the restaurant will great. It's longer, so let's check if it will predict correctly and run it. Yeah, it's positive. We can also debug it to see what the result will have. Okay. Let's check. So we have the predict label one, and here the interesting thing is the score. So we have uh, the certainty of which is uh, one. We can see that it's pretty close to one. So uh, the prediction is very good. And 
let's go back to the presentation. So do you have any questions? I have a question related to a validation process. Mm -hmm. uh, does uh, this uh, tool uh, automatically split uh, data set to validation data set and uh, how many uh, percent of uh, data will be go there? So if we see here 75% of accuracy, does it mean that it's split it to uh, data set and checked on the and that part, or it checked on uh, the same data. So uh, it it uses eighty percent of the data that we provided as a training data set, and the other twenty percent are, are used as a test data. And it's based on this twenty percent that are used as training data, uh, training data. So it divided it automatically, and it uses it as a test data and it's not trained on the train data uh, on the test data only on the trade data which is 80 percent thank you and another question if we have for example uh unbalanced data so probably uh only five percent of positives and 95 percent of negatives and uh I guess one metric like uh, accuracy would be not enough. So I would I would uh, want to have a um, true positive rate and true negative rate. Does uh, this model uh, model type uh, provide some functionality to see these metrics? Uh, so uh, the training data is very important and it should be chosen carefully to be sure that we will have the best results. And uh, if we have only 5%, let's say, of positive and all others are negative, I believe the accuracy will not be very high. And yeah, that's. So, I mean, if I just have enough data, for example, thousands of uh, I mean, hundreds of thousands of examples. Mm -hmm. So should I filter it to balance uh, the data set? Yeah, 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 it should be better balanced in order to have a good results. In, in that case, probably you will not have very, very good results. So the, the data is very important to be chosen carefully and to be as balanced as possible. Thank you. You're welcome. Nikon, we have a question in the chat. Could you please check it? Mm, yeah, sure. Yeah, we can also uh, use different algorithms. So the question is, can we choose an algorithm for different needs? I mean, linear regression, logistic regression, decision trees, et cetera. Yes, we can choose different algorithms for the different needs that we have. Uh, we should make, for example, some research, what will be the best uh, algorithm for our case. Uh, and uh, there are some provided uh, algorithms and uh, for these cases i believe there will be uh, good options uh, and we can choose some of the provided algorithms and use some of them as uh, we have another question in the chat as far as i understood the algorithm is automatically chosen based on the task so it's to automatically chosen based on the scenario, we should make a decision, which is the most suitable scenario for our case. And then the best algorithm will be chosen to train this model. Any other questions, guys? 